All right, time now for the day's business news, and we have a Stephen Carroll here with us as well. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Jeannie. Let's start with the currency markets, where the euro is having a bit of a rough day. Yeah, that's true. We've seen the value of the euro dip to a nine-year low against the dollar earlier on in trading today. One dollar dipping under the one, uh, sorry, one euro rather, dipping under the one dollar and nineteen cents mark, its lowest level since two thousand and six. Now there are two things thought to be driving this. One is hopes of new stimulus action from the European Central Bank. The other, resurgent fears. Of Greece leaving the eurozone. Well, for more on this, we can go to London and speak to Jane Foley, who's a senior currency, currency strategist at Rabobank. Jane, thanks for joining us in France 24. Uh, what is the big factor here? Is it Mario Draghi, or is it Greece, or is it a bit of both? It's both, and of course, it's also the fact that the dollar has been on a strengthening trend really since the second half of, of last year. So all of these factors put together really are pressuring the euro dollar right now. But of course, the quantitative easing, the, the, the promise or the threat of more easing from the ECB has been amongst, uh, been amongst us for, for some weeks now, for a couple of months. But of course, the new factor is Greece. Uh, this is something which has crept up on us uh, due to the, uh, the failure of the, the, the Greek prime minister to get his presidential candidate in December, and now we have the snap election in Greece on January the 25th and of course the uncertainty for the market is that if we do get the far left coming in, uh, in as, as a leadership in Greece are their policies really compatible uh, with those of the Troikia and the current bailout plan so uh, this is what's worrying the market right now. And, and are investors at this stage not immune to worrying about Greece this is an issue that we've been looking at for a very long time. This is exactly right. And of course, things have really moved on since we had uh, the, the start of uh, or Greece's problems at the start of the, the EMU crisis a few years ago. Now, back then, perhaps one of the big issues for Europe was this, this fear of contagion, uh, the fear that uh, higher yields or bond yields in, in Greece and pressures in Greece would, would push into Ireland, into Spain, into Portugal, into Italy, etc. But many people would now argue that since then we've moved on. We've had structural reform in these peripheral countries. We've had return of growth, uh, particularly in, in economies such as, as Ireland. And many people now say that this reform and this growth means that there is now a firewall and there's less chance of co co uh, contagion passing from Greece's problems into the periphery. And other people would say that if there really is a firewall and there isn't going to be contagion, that there may be uh, some politicians in Europe would be perhaps happier to see uh, Greece leave the system. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Uh, no one really knows what direction this will take. But of course, for now, the focus is on that election in Greece on January the 25th. And of course, a far, firewall or not, the rest of the European economy isn't doing too great either. Uh, are we to expect much more movement in the euro before that meeting of the European Central Bank in a couple of weeks' time? Well, it is quite possible that the, uh, the, the, the threat of quantitative easing is now potentially priced in to some degree in Europe. After all, ECB President Draghi has been talking about it now uh, for some while, even though it's, it's potentially the, the case that there isn't yet a, a majority behind him in, in the committee. Uh, so it might be priced in. Now, other people would say that whilst uh, quantitative easing can make a difference, bond yields are already so low across Europe that at a marginal a lower a lowering of the price of bond yields perhaps won't bring us an awful lot more of stimulus and therefore it may not be the panacea in, in helping Europe's growth problems and fighting off deflation but the fact that Draghi has been uh, talking a uh, very dovish talk in, in recent months has been driving the euro lower as we've been discussing and that should help to improve exports in the eurozone and also help to bring in a little bit of imported inflation so the weaker Europe should be helping at the prospects for the Eurozone economy. OK, we'll have to wait and see. Jane Foley from Rabobank in London, thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, Stephen, let's come back now to France, where we've been talking a lot today about that radio interview that the French president, Francois Hollande, gave this morning, where he got a grilling about the state of the French economy. Yes, growth and jobs, the two, or the lack thereof, really, have been the major features of Francois Hollande's term so far. Unsurprisingly, they also took up a major part of that radio interview, the French president admitting his part in the country's poor economic performance. Here's Lance King with more. Oh, no. We seem Connect to, to have a... Come back to me. Come back to me.
We seem to have a problem with that package there. We'll hopefully be able to bring it to you a little bit later. In the meantime, let's take a look at what's happening on the stock markets here in Europe. Those worries about Greece that we had been hearing about uh, from Jane Foley at Rabobank there, uh, not really helping things on the European markets in trading today. All of the main indices down at this sort of midpoint uh, of the trading day. In London, the retailer Marks & Spencers has seen its shares fall by around 2% uh, over fears of poor Christmas sales figures. Oil and gas shares also big fallers on the markets there and that's largely down to the changing price of oil. Let's take a look uh, at what's happening on the oil price market for now. We've seen Brent crude hit uh, its lowest level since 2009 of just over $55. It's not doing too well uh, today either. Oil prices have plummeted in the past six months over the glut in supply and the falling global demand for oil. All right, Stephen, let's just wrap up uh, with some music for a change. It appears that there's no clear winner in the battle for the biggest album of last year. Yeah, that's right. This is the competition for who sold the most albums in the United States last year. There are two main competitors. One is Taylor Swift's 1989 album. Under what's called classic sales, that's CD buying and uh, downloads, uh, she sold almost 3.7 million copies of that album. Uh, but the New York Times is reporting that she might not have that title after all, and that's because of competition from the soundtrack to Disney's Frozen. Uh, according to the newspaper, a new measure of sales that includes streaming listening, so from services like Spotify but YouTube as well, they've classed the album equivalent sales uh, for Frozen at 4.5 million uh, sales. That's ahead of Taylor Swift, puts them then over the other side of the rankings. Of course, very controversial because Taylor Swift decided not to let her album be published on Spotify so she wasn't able to access those extra sales uh, as it were. You shouldn't feel too sorry for her though. Taylor Swift did estimate uh, to earn $64 million last year so she's not losing out. Uh, but another win it looks like for Disney's Frozen.